Kanji Sergio Rangeramendera de la Gilegina and the Gilu Jimabazza on the Bulun and Kainda and Kanjir and Nepal, the Russia of the Gavari Buds and Bakaimba. The Datam Jetterbut and Buku Jil to be Zuni Jinni Dirish, Ladan and Mimji, Pongbutan, the Jin Lazi, Chola Chala Jabana. Sanga Sundar of the Jin de Vedro Jurbata, the Shiji, and Bishin Jinni Dirish. Kanta Sutu don't get Jigana, the Chilama Jabakan. Tingdiridimbichi <laughs> Chapton Colleges, Jebaton, Chenon Cabo Sambo Sangeton, Conla Candy Teletter Demba, Sumba Cherezella Chatsalo, Sigi Java Tamji, Jipumbo Chibba, Sigi Punji Pajib, Jambe on La Chatsal Corvalle to Tarema, to the Rai Gigi Dutorena, Nando de Domain, La Chatsalo Cajitonation J. Pana Lasso Down. Don George Jerje, but the Jijan La Chatsal. She shot on Jesu Bejan Bar, the wind gilded to bed to Jet. Some intellect the bed of Mawa Jambula Major Logo Java, she shot on Jesu Bejan, but the wind gilded to bed to Jet. Some intellect the bed of Mawa Jambula Major Logo Java, she shot on Jesu Bejan Bar, the wind gilded to bed to Jet. Some intellect the bed of Mawa Jambula Major Logo Java. So I did some of my kids. She did not shut up my kids. Go Yabjini le lajen dala rewa ma chi kangen da nin sen. Kundu jamyan kubi san de chiji tu jishu. Chung sen menye menye chungye ta genye bille bise ta dung. Chunye ma jyur pa du chapshen. Solwar ma jyuro chi. Hong uje yu jen nuk jang zan pe ma gazar dung dung da. Yanjen chogi ngu dung ni pe ma jung shek. Pordo kandre ma mbe gore chiji jizu ta du jishinji lop jishik jisu guru pe ma si de. Kusun na. Dalla chupo mangio un dolce al dosso, mujer, mujer la so, devo calcare un balzo, mi giungi tu un genio, samba, droba, non c'ho da tutto, un dolce al dosso. So, tasci del lec, I hope. Those who need translations are comfortable in the different translators' rooms. <clears throat> so for um, German, we have Anna, and then we have um, Luciana for Spanish and Gustavo, uh, Mr. Santiago for uh, Portuguese. <clears throat> So, so good to see so many familiar faces. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the second session of the Sutra project. Um, amidst <clears throat> all human um, shortcomings, what we're doing here now is extremely valuable and you you will not see it but i'm very happy right now you know? <laughs> and uh, so a few months ago we chose these four particular sutras because um, usually when you know we tell people oh you should read sutras 
most people immediately jump to sutras like the White Lotus Sutra or Vajra Chetika Sutra, you know, um, or even Vimalakirti Sutra, which are all good, but they are um, mm, very much viewpoint oriented, you know. And for those who have already understood the basic teachings of Buddha Dharma, so mm, so then I was thinking, and I went through because we needed to make sure that that um, the sutras are also translated at least into English. So I basically went through. Uh, I don't know how to do that now. Rebecca? Yes. Um, so momentous, I think Luciana is saying she cannot record the Spanish translation. Uh, okay. can, can you somehow do that, help her? Okay. Yes, so, <clears throat> yeah, so I went through the 84,000 reading room to see uh, which sutras are translated and which sutra we can choose. So we have chosen these four. Um, so the first three sutras are very short, as I said before in the previous session. Um, we hope to finish each sutra um, with only one session. And the last sutra, um, <clears throat> we will need at least two sessions. Um, right, so before we begin, I would again, like before, uh, would like to request you to try and sit straight and um, bring to mind Shakyamuni Buddha um, seated under the Bodhi tree, exactly in this sort of, you know, how you see behind me. Uh, portrait <clears throat> with his right hand touching the ground and left hand in meditation posture, his gaze fixed upon you and with a faint smile and the Bodhi tree behind him. Just that, just look at the face of the Buddha his hands, feet, his robe, the seat, the tree, mm, just watch that. <clears throat> Please. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> In the Buddha Anusmriti Samadhi Sagara, a sutra that I'm very happy to have stumbled onto. <clears throat> um, in that sutra, Um, Shakyamuni Buddha says, let me find the quote. Mm. 
<clears throat> um, so the whole sutra starts when Buddha displays, uh, you know, <clears throat> Buddha gives teachings and um, displays enlightened qualities. So then um, his father, who was um, the main audience at that time, <clears throat> he asks Buddha, we are so fortunate that we get to see you, especially someone like me. I got to see you since the day you were born and you have been extraordinary. And now you are completely enlightened Buddha. So we are extremely fortunate. What of those who will be born in the future, who will have devotion to you, but um, will not see you? How, do, how can they see, the, see you? To that, the Buddha gives teaching of Buddha Anusmriti, which means recollection of the Buddha. And he teaches how uh, <clears throat> sons and daughters of noble families should um, contemplate um, on him. And in that sutra, Buddha says, Jabajan Buddhas in the Chima Mount in Rijibom, Rijibuma Lasso, but Tamsi Le Kayaru, Lu Tambor Sante, Sem Tichito, Nandu, Yanda Brashane, Sangij Sukiku, Jess the Temper Chena, Kansa T, Sem the Sangij Totem to Rabash. Oh, did I mute myself? Okay. Um with Tamji Nyomu when you tamji said you mean the Chima Mobutina, should you charge me with a chaos? So in that Sutra Buddha says, um, oh great king, he's talking to his father. So in future, sons and daughters of noble family, if they would sit straight and with one pointed concentration, focus on the body of the Buddha, just the physical form of the Buddha, know that their mind during that moment, during that time is similar to the mind of the Buddha. He says, Sangi ji tam In that moment, their mind is not different from the mind of the Buddha. And even though the, Buddha, uh, the sons and daughters of noble family, their mind, uh, how to say is, um, um, you know, full of strong afflictions, strong, you know, um, yeah, strong afflictions like anger, arrogance, desire, ignorance, right? But because of meditating in this way, soon they will become free of such afflictions or at least these afflictions will not be able to overpower them. And soon in future, sons and daughters of noble family will bring um, a rainfall of Dharma upon sentient beings. So like that, in that sutra, Buddha praises in so many different ways, telling the benefit of doing Buddha Anusmriti, recollection of the Buddha. And so we should, yeah, I really hope that um, through our effort of going through these sutras, you can have a clearer picture of what kind of teacher Shakyamuni Buddha was um, through learning what kind of teachings he gave. <clears throat> because, you know, merit practice is so easy, actually, you know, if you know how. Like he, like in the sutra, Buddha says, just um, focus the mind, concentrate on the physical form of the Buddha. You know, that's really something we can all do, you know, at least for a moment, few moments. Oh, by the way, uh, so many of you have done the impermanence meditation and already sent me your homework. So thank you so much. And 
I believe some of you are still on the way, which is okay, but would really appreciate it if you would um, give us your sort of report. <clears throat> um, now the Sutra begins with a prostration, homage to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. How did they translate? Probably that, homage to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Yeah, homage to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Now this prostration is quite important because looking at this prostration, we will understand a lot of things. We understand that it is belonging to the Sutra section. And we also understand that it is probably a dialogue between Buddhas and Bodhisattvas or between Bodhisattvas. <clears throat> when the uh, Buddha Dharma was being brought to Tibet, um, we had so many translators translating hundreds, thousands of um, texts, sutras and tantras and so many different texts. And it was getting a bit jumbled up and a bit difficult for people to recognize which teaching belongs to what section. So we have usually um, Abhidharma, Vinaya and sutra sections of teachings, right? So Vinaya is where all the rules and disciplines are laid. <clears throat> um, sutra is where all the general teachings of Buddha Dharma, like the Four Noble Truths, Karma, and so on are taught. And Abhidharma is where the ultimate teaching is, they are taught, right? So it was difficult for people to discern. And the king found out that all the translators, they, at the beginning of their translations, they make homage to their own um, sort of uh, personal deities, like someone is making homage to Manjushri or Chenreze, Avalokiteshvara or Buddha and so on. So there was also no uniformity. So the king, um, <clears throat> I think Thiral Pachan, he gathered all the translators, uh, you know, Tibetan translators and made this rule made this law that from now on, when you translate text um, that belongs to the Vinaya section, I want you to write homage to the omniscient one. Uh, when you translate um, texts belonging to the Sutra section, I want you to write at the beginning homage to uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, homage to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And when you are translating texts belonging to Abhidharma, I want you to write homage to youthful Manjushri. This really showed the deep understanding of the king because it is so true, you know, Vinaya uh, is teachings mainly of um, uh, rules and regulations for sort of what can a practitioner do and or should do or should not do, you know. So this is very much pertaining karma. A lot of te this teaching depends on the law of karma and nobody understands the law of karma completely other than the Buddha. Buddha says only the Buddha can understand karma fully. So, um, so it was very um, skillful of the king to have you know, um, homage to the omniscient one at the beginning of Vinaya. So similarly with Sutra, Sutras are teachings um, that are usually dialogues between Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Buddhas and monks or between uh, monks and Bodhisattvas and so on. So it depends a lot on the dialogues between um, among the Sangha. So at the, at the beginning to write homage to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas is very skillful. And same goes to the Abhidharma, where, uh, which is um, teaching of um, emptiness mainly or ultimate truth. And so um, 
writing homage to youthful Manjushri. Now Manjushri is also said to be um, the teacher of all the thousand Buddhas of our time, of our Kalpa. And also he is said to be like the manifestation of the wisdom of all the Buddha. Um, also among the Bodhisattvas, he is said to be the most intelligent one. So um, for various reasons, uh, it was a perfect decision that we should, that the translators should make homage to um, youthful Manjushri because Abhidharma is extremely difficult and subtle to, to comprehend. So <clears throat> that. So here we have homage to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, which tells us that, that this text belongs to the Sutra section. And most possibly this text is a dialogue between Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. <clears throat> then, um, just like before, we have the setup of the sutra. How did this sutra come to be? Um, so, Dike Thakrit is teaching us. Uh, thus, have I heard at one time. Um, this shows um, the teacher, uh, um, the place and uh, teaching the listener and time. Um, <clears throat> so in the translation we have, thus did I hear at one time, the blessed one was dwelling in the Sudharma assembly hall in the heaven of the 33, together with the great gathering of 500 monks and very many Bodhisattva Mahasattvas, including Maitriya and Manjushri. Yes, so now the teacher is the Buddha, no, no doubt here. Um, <clears throat> so where was the place, the dwelling? Um, well, the dwelling place uh, is not, how to say, it's not our realm. It is a heavenly realm. And um, most particularly, it is a temple called Suddharma, where um, the, the Buddha was dwelling for three months, uh, you know, during uh, spending his time in rain retreat, uh, you know. So that was the time. And so that is the place, particularly. Um, now, um, it is not completely clear that uh, this was the time that um, the sutra was taught exactly during that time when Buddha visited the heaven of the 33, uh, heavenly realm of the 33 uh, to give teachings to the rebirth of his mother. But most of the things are in align um, alignment, especially um, at the end, it says um, Sariputra, uh, where is it? Oh, that is not here. Um, anyway, so I thought I saw that Sariputra was also there, but I think I was, I, because I also read the previous sutra, which also says the four factors of, um, you know, Bodhisattvas, but anyway. Um, so, um, in the life of, when we read the life of the Buddha, there was a time when uh, six different great masters, non-Buddhist 
teachers came to challenge the Buddha um, in uh, debate and in everything, in meditation, in miracles, you know, whatever, in poetry, they were there to challenge him in everything, every field of knowledge. And they did not succeed. And not only they did not succeed, after having defeated them, Buddha displayed such miracles that um, hundreds and thousands of people could see, touch, taste, like, um, you know, some of the miracles where they say that Buddha uh, made such tree grow that was so huge that the um, top of the tree would um, reach some heavenly realm where people could just human in you know humans from our human realms could actually touch the trees and taste the fruit and so on so anyway so whatever the case um, that made buddha particularly famous so to speak you know uh, of course he was already well known uh, kings of many different countries uh, where, where his students and, and that's why they, the non-Buddhist teachers came to debate with him. But this made him particularly uh, liked by the people. And it was said that there was a time where people were making a lot of offerings, too many offerings. And Buddha <laughs> saw that there is a danger that it could become an obstacle for the monks and nuns, you know, because they were getting too much, too many offerings. So the Buddha decided that um, he should remove himself for, for, for the time being so that things will calm down. And also he saw that it was the perfect time to liberate the rebirth of his mother because his real mother, his birth mother passed away when Buddha was only uh, one week old, right? <clears throat> so along with uh, Sariputra, and um, many monks, Buddha left for a um, particular heavenly realm called 33, uh, Triya Tamsa, uh, where he um, accepted, uh, you know, when um, Sakra, the king of Triya Tamsa, is a heavenly god, he requests, he requests Buddha that, you know, that Buddha remain in that realm for a duration of three months for the rain retreat. Buddha accepts and Buddha stays there. And um, <clears throat> during that time, um, Buddha gives teachings to so many people and especially to the rebirth of his mother and um, the, the, how to say, liberates the um, celestial youth who was the next life of his mother. And he also gives a, a lot of different, um, yeah, that, so the teachings ranges um, there are many sutras and Vajrayana teachings that he gave in the heavenly realm. Um, so in our realm, the people were beginning to worry and they go to their kings asking what is going on. We don't see Buddha anymore. And so the king of Varanasi goes to Mughal Yanaputra. Um, you know, so Buddha has two chief disciples, Sariputra and Mughal Yanaputra. So he goes to Mughal Yanaputra asking where the Buddha is. So the, then Mughal Yanaputra tells the king that Buddha is right now in such and such a realm and he is in rain retreat. So when the time of rain retreat finishes, people go to Mughal Yanaputra again and request him, please, can you ask the Buddha now to, to, to come to our realm? because it's, it's been three months. And so that event, when Buddha finally decides to come back to our realm, um, um, is called um, Lapap Tichen, you know, descending from heavenly realm. Um, and Theravada, Mahayana, everybody celebrates this. So in India, it is said that I think in um, Sankasya, you know, um, this, place named Sankasya, that was the place where Buddha descended from heavenly realm in front of everyone to see. So I think that this sutra is, uh, was also taught during that time, it seems very likely. Mm, so
Now, since it is a sutra uh, section, we can be sure that the person who, who recited it, the person, person who compiled it is, um, remember the Bodhisattva Project people, is Ananda. Ananda was the one who compiled all the sutra teachings in front of 499 arhats, remember. So this was also, um, you know, it was Ananda who was saying, thus have I heard at one time, the Buddha was remaining in that and that, yeah. Now, the reason why um, we have chosen this sutra is because, first of all, it's very short, easy to read. And <clears throat> it, um, it talks about purification of negative karma. Um, so I thought from this, I can also talk a little bit about karma, the concept of karma uh, or the, the, the nature of karma, what karma is. Um, I believe some of you may be completely new actually to uh, such a sort of Buddhist gathering. <clears throat> um, One of the greatest teaching of Buddha were, is the teaching of cause and effect. Buddha saw that everything has their own causes and conditions. Um, this is such an important uh, revolutionary, actually, thing to, to have had said by anybody, you know, that to say such a thing that um, all phenomena have their own causes and condition. He was really, I mean, so brave and also so practical that you could really understand that this person had really understood the workings, workings of nature. So the moment you say all phenomena have their own causes and conditions, they exist because of their own causes and conditions, you negate a creator automatically. When you have a creator, God or an energy or time or whatever it may be, when you have such a phenomena, then everything is created by this person, this uh, entity or this thing, you know, this phenomena. But that means that everything has one source, one cause. Whereas Buddha says, no, every, all phenomena have their own causes and conditions. Of course, he didn't say that to negate a creator God, you know, but because that was the truth, that is the truth. When we look at anything, anywhere, we'll find that they have their own causes and conditions. You know, um, more you look, more you will see that Mm. Um, nothing arises without any causes and condition and they have their and all phenomena have their own particular causes and condition meaning um, uh, the causes and condition that gives rise to uh, phenomena A will not give rise to phenomena B you know like a causes and condition that brings um um, a wall is not the causes and conditions that will bring the table. So they, meaning each phenomena must have a causes and condition and they have to be, and they are different from one another, the, the causes and conditions. I think this much anyone will accept. Any rational thinking person can easily accept, yes. Um, you know, nothing can come out of nothing, that things cannot come out of nothing. And um, also things do not, um, things are not born from just anything, 
you know so you cannot just you cannot expect a mango growing from a wall you know just because a wall is a cause uh, you cannot expect a, 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 diff, a totally different result to be born there. So um, there is this two type of certainty that everything must have a causes and condition and the causes and condition have to be their own. It's very particular. And other than, other than that, other than their own causes and conditions, they do not depend on anything else. Um, we will talk more about this when we will go through um, the, um, the Rice Seedling Sutra, the fourth sutra. But anyway, to get back to the current topic. <clears throat> mm, so when you think like that, then although there is no creator, you'll find that Phenomena by themselves are bound by certain, I don't want to say rules, but I don't have better words than that right now, you know, certain rules, certain way of being, you know, you can just, you can see that anywhere, you know, like trees have their own particular way of existing, animals have their own particular, every, Everything like water has their own particular way of existing, fire, wind. Wherever you look, you'll find that, first of all, they have their own particular ways. And then there, there is this universal law that they must all follow, which is that they must have causes and condition and their causes and condition has to be um, very particular, not just any causes and condition. So it's, Um, so <clears throat> now the external phenomena is very easy to see all external phenomena, even our body, um, walls, trees, mountains, rivers, ocean, mm, they all follow, they are all bound by this law of causes and condition, and they all follow this rule. Um, how, also because they are born out of causes and conditions, so naturally they are bound by the law of causes and conditions. So um, as long as the causes and conditions are complete, the phenomena exist. The moment the causes and conditions are incomplete, the phenomena cannot exist anymore. And when you change the causes and conditions, the phenomena will also change. So like that. Um, now here, when we're talking about karma, it's not entirely similar. And um, it's not, it, well, it's similar to the, just the uh, understanding of causes, cause and effect, but not entirely same, right? Karma is a bit different. Yes, karma is also talking about cause and effect and the external sort of world is also cause and effect, but, there is a difference though. And this difference comes from the difference between the external world and internal world, basically form and mind. <laughs> mm. Because external world is in a way very simple, very mm, predictable, you know, if, if you, and, and more controllable. So if, um, you know, uh, if you if you if you put a, a red paint on a white wall, it will become red. There's there is no, you know, there is no um, the 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 wall has no freedom. The paint has no freedom. The moment they touch, they sort of the the wall will become red, right? So similarly, when you plant something. Causes and conditions are complete, something will grow. When you plant rice, rice seedling will grow. Or as Ken Tsongsa Ken which he likes to say, when you put, a, put an egg into a boiling water and keep it there for five to eight minutes, the egg will blow and boil, right? There is no, um, no other outcome. 
other possibility. But mind is not like that. Mind is not like that at all. It is unpredictable, it is fickle, it is fast, and it changes all the time. So it is very clear that the cause and effect, the pattern of cause and effect that external world follows is, and, and the cause, a pattern of cause, uh, cause and effect, the inner world, a mind, you know, mental phenomenon, it follows, it's very different. So very simply, um, like, uh, like, like this room, this, this, this place right now feels like a very nice place. The sun is, sun is shining, you know, I'm doing what I like, you know, this is, but I feel this is very meaningful. So it's, everything is good. So the same place, you know, maybe even after an hour when it is cold, when, you know, there's exactly, you know, when, when, yeah, such causes, conditions are not there, my feelings to the room completely change. Or even tomorrow, even, or, or tomorrow, even when if there's like this very similar sunlight, where it, I'm sitting in the same place, it doesn't, doesn't make, doesn't give result like it, it used to, like before. So same, yeah, same goes with our taste. Things that we like today, we don't like tomorrow. Same, everything, you know. So mind is definitely follows, uh, yes, they follow cause, cause, causes and condition, but the way the mind follow causes and condition is not entirely similar to external world. Um, so, very, okay, so we're talking about karma right now, right? So the, the, the law of karma here, um, it's like saying, yes, mind has its own sort of um, pattern of cause and effect. And that is, um, if you do good, you know, good things happen to you. And if you do bad, bad things happens to you. Well, that's very simple, right? Very, very, very mm, simple version of karma. What karma is, is much more complicated, but let's just, for the sake of com communication, if you benefit others, if you refrain from harming others, you gain the benefit. You also gain benefit as a result. Um, if you harm others, um, if you do not refrain from harming others, you will get the negative result. Um, this is, I mean, forget about karmic result, even the immediate sort of, which is, which is also karmic result, but even the immediate result, right? So karmic results, there are um, direct result and indirect result and immediate and ones that will come after you know long time right and uh, so uh, our teachers tells tells us that there are four or five different uh, results to each karma right so now immediate result would be like just when you do something good when you when you help somebody what um, uh, some people call moral compass, moral compass, that you already know that this is what we should do. No one necessarily has to tell you when you help somebody, when you benefit somebody, there is the peace that you feel, the calmness and happiness and joy that you feel unless you are really messed up. So that, that is a good foundation to understand the karma, you know, to, 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 to talk about karma that immediately there is a result. Oh, and when you, when you harm somebody, when you, mm, yes, uh, when you cheat, when you lie, when you really make someone else suffer, you in turn immediately feel guilty. You feel bad about yourself. You, um, 
might even feel regret, remorse. So why did that happen? Did it happen without any reason, without any causes and conditions? No, all phenomena must follow causes and conditions. Or is it just random? No, all phenomena has their own particular causes and conditions. So then there is a pattern that will you, you will see that more good you do, more joy, happiness, calmness, peace you get, uh, more content you become. And this type of joy and happiness and contentment will propel for you to do more good. So you see that it is, it, is, it has its own cause and effect going on. Similarly, more harm you bring to others, more regret, more remorse, more ignorance. And this again brings more harm to you and others and more harm to you and others. So there is this type of um, cause and effect that you can, you can find. Now, external mistakes, when you have made a mistake, whatever, um, the, like a wall that you, you don't need and it's actually very harmful, you can break it down. <laughs> you, can, you, can, uh, you can get a hammer and, or call somebody, pay them to, to, to get rid of the wall. No more mistakes. What to do with the internal mistakes, that mistakes that you make within yourself, that, that you, your mind makes. So here um, is where this sutra comes into play, that um, the purification that then you have to cleanse your mind, you have to do this um, purification. And it can be a ritual or it could just be a flow of practice, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it needs these four different characteristics to be complete to be, you know, purification is also a result and it needs its own causes, uh, causes and conditions. This is also very much, um, you can experience it, you know, when you, why do we do that? Why do we, when I, when I harm somebody and I harm this person and I feel bad, I feel horrible, then I go back to that person and I say, I'm so sorry that I did that to you. You know, I really, I, I will never do this again. And then if the person says, okay, I accept your apology. You know, immediately you, you feel like you are a new person, you're renewed. The weight, heavy weight that you have been carrying is suddenly gone, right? So that's very similar approach here with this type of purification. Of course, the Buddha, Dharma Sangha, they didn't create the law of karma. They didn't create, they, with their power, they didn't say, if you do good, good things will happen. But if you do bad, you will be punished by karma. Nothing like that. They just observe. They just observe how things work outside and inside. So um, external phenomena, they don't need to teach us necessarily. So how to take care of our inner world, our mind. So this is what it is about, right? How to practice accumulate merit and make purification of negative karma. Um, so, so similarly here, when we, um, how to say, accum accumulate negative karma, uh, we regret it, there is regret, remorse. Then, mm, uh, you know, uh, since we have taken a vow, may, most of us have taken refuge vow. And especially uh, many of us have taken bodhisattva vow, right? Or maybe even monks and nuns vow. So harming sentient beings goes against that too. So you go to your preceptors, you go to your Sangha, or you go in front of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in your mind and make the purification. 
So the process is then very simple. Just as when you harm somebody and you go there, you beg for forgiveness. You say, I have done this and this and this. I'm so sorry. I will not do this again. So please, can you forgive me? Right. And sometimes you, as a, as a token of gratitude uh, or regret, you, give, you might even give a gift. Like, I'm so sorry. Right. So similarly here, there's a kind of similar where first you regret. You must have regret. If you do not regret, you do not have remorse. It's not really a <laughs> purification. It's just you following a ritual, just doing something, uh, but it is not sincere. And then you must accept whatever, admit to whatever you have done, whatever negative karma you have done and beg for forgiveness. Um, and as a gift, so to speak, accumulate more uh, positive karma. Um, so sometimes what people do uh, is that, um, let's say someone has killed an animal, uh, you know, so they will go to a temple and take, sort of try to make purification. They will say, I will save the life of 100 animals, you know, as a, as a purification, right? So that, like the gift. Um, then um, promising never to do it again, which is important. Right. You, you cannot go to somebody and say, I'm so sorry that I, I hit you, I harm you. Uh, I might do it again tomorrow, <laughs> but can you forgive me? This is, doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. So, so that's exactly the same as we do in ordinary world. So we bring the exact same idea, the notion of uh, forgiveness, uh, repentance, uh, purification to to our mind here exactly same um, and just as uh, you know uh, as I said before the moment the purification is complete you feel lighter you feel like ah I can breathe now my negative karma is purified right um So all of this is dependent on mind and mind alone. Matter of fact, all the creation of samsara, all the result of nirvana, everything depends on mind. Now, when we have a mistake in our mind, we cannot rectify it through external phenomena. It doesn't work. External phenomena cannot even bring happiness to us, uh, you know, unfailingly. Sometimes it makes us happy. Sometimes they don't. They don't work at all. So we cannot rely on them. So, all, so, so the only thing we can rely upon for the purification of the mind is the mind alone, mind itself. So um, this is kind of important here because some religious traditions uh, you know, uh, teaches uh, like in India, we have the river Ganga, you know, so it doesn't matter who you are, if you take a bath in, in the river Ganga, willing, wishing to purify your negative karma, right? So they believe that all of your negative karma is washed away, right? Based on this divine water coming, you know, coming from the goddess Ganga. Or some tradition, we you know sprinkle water, and and say, okay, now you're, uh, you know, by the blessing of whatever God or whatever, you know, your negative karma sins are gone. So all that. Uh, so um, then, some so years ago, somebody asked me, how is this different? How is Buddhist purification rituals are different? Well, that's because um, the difference mainly comes from. Um, what is more important? External setup for the, this type of purification is not important at all. It is entirely mental setup. You know, it's just a mental world. It is the mistake is done through mind, and only through mind can it be rectified. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say a little bit, and of course we will talk more about karma and cause and effect in the later sutras. I think the next sutra is about um, um, transmigration, you know, from this life to next life, something like that. And then the fourth sutra, like I said, is about um, dependent origination, the rice seedling sutra. So both of these has a lot of agent of um, um, karma, cause and effect. And so we will have to talk more on this. Before going into the sutra, I would like to read it aloud. And this is, as I said last time, this is the um, oral transmission and I have received it from Zongsa Kinsi Rinpoche. And he, from his teachers, so on, all the way back to the Buddha. Jagarake to Arya Chatura Dharma Nirdesha Nama Mayana Sutra Pyuk the Papa Shit and Bashaj with the Bashabado. Sangha the Chinese Matamjala Chas or the Gita Gita Vidu in the Chung Dame Days and Jesus Hayanana. I do such shoes on a Gelonga Jatampe, Gelong, Gilchim, Buddha, and Chambada, Jambala, so much in the Simba Sambach and Buddha, the Mother Tapti, the Shude. Then a Jum then did she, Chinese Sambach and Chambala, Kat, the Chambas, and Simba Sambach and Buddha, she did the debaching sock by a city number of Juru, see Kansha, and did that. Number of Sinjim, the Kundjabada, and the Kundjabada, sort of Chiba Jibu top down, Tinjit top so tell a number of Sinjim, the Kundjabi, me, Jabani, me give a legend. Tell a Java Mawa, you know, then tell a Nimbo Kundjobani, me give a leche, Nedam, give a little shin to Zambao, tell a sort of Chibarache, Betomne, Dombayan, the Barnab, Missy, but Tombato, tell a Tinji, Tommy, Sanga the Chandisama, Sanga the Chu, the Gindula Chaps of the Chandu, send me Tomade, Tet of the Dembala, Tindi, Big B, Sijin, number Mijuru, Chamba, Chandisam, Bosambo, Chimbu, Shibo, the Dada, and then the Bachesh is of a Sijin number, Sijin number of Juru, Chandisam, Bosambo, Chimbu, do the Tom. Labrasa, cutting the chow, some brazo, comparso, mong the chow, ten, and never jabber. They would gin menu parajo, rojum, then the jigi cars and a chinese and person which embassy the gallon tether, the chinese and person which put another, the gin of soap and high punam, the thumb jet, the debit court, the diary on the genetic super number two. Papa Chichi, the message of the Tabashima dozos, or Jagarji, Kembo, surrender body tongue, she changed lots of pendishi day, jurching shoot it, and a papa. So the sutra is very simple. Um, it's a conversation, well, more like a teaching that Buddha gives directly to Manjushri. I have a feeling that it is a part of a um, bigger dialogue between Buddhas and Bodhisattvas because it's, it starts very abruptly. Um, nobody asks Buddha any question. Buddha just talks to Manjushri. So it seems like actually um, this, is a, this, should, this could be a part of a bigger uh, teaching. Um, but anyway, Buddha, uh, you know, looks at Manju sorry, looks at Maitreya, not Manjushri, Maitreya, and tells um, tells Maitreya that Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, um, you know, if they have these four characteristics, then whatever negative karma that they have accumulated can be abandoned, can be um, destroyed, Sijunam can be overpowered. I think that is the uh, proper meaning, yeah, can be overcome. So what are these four? Number mm -hmm. so, so basically there are four types of strengths or powers that Bodhisattva should employ if they want to mm, purify their negative karma. So one of the first, Power is the power of remorse, regret, or um, um, the power of uh, renouncing. Uh, actually, the Tibetan term, number sun jinpa, those of you who know Tibetan, you know. Number sun jinpa means power of criticism. So here is self criticism. The Bodhisattva, whoever have accumulated negative karma, one of the first thing to do is to criticize oneself, to criticize one's action that, oh, that was a horrible thing to do. How could you do this? One tells oneself and this ignites regret and remorse because most of the time as, is, as with 
everything, we just pass through life half awake. And when we do something bad, we are half aware that it is bad. But we are so busy with so many things, we don't have time to think about that. So then we feel guilty, but it's not strong. You know, we, there's, a, there's a faint remorse, but not really because we haven't given it time to grow. So here, we, we make it as a, a part of purification ritual that you actually talk to yourself, think about the bad things that you have done and contemplate, that was horrible. So number sin jinba, number sin jinba meaning to criticize, but here not criticize others, but to criticize one's own action. The first strength, I think this is here translated as the action of repentance, repentance. Yeah, this is important because without it, the whole thing becomes just a, you know, just a um, half-minded business like anything else in our life, you know, and it will not uh, purify our negative karma properly. Uh, so one of the first thing, the most important thing is this wish to purify negative karma, this remorse uh, and, and this, this guilt even, you know, that, oh, that was a horrible thing I did. I must pur make purification. And um, many great teachers in their youth, they have done horrible things. Some of them have done horrible things, killed people and so on, you know. Um, the thieves, they were thieves and robbers. And really what sets them apart from others is their, their remorse, their guilt, and their self-criticism, self-reflection that they go through uh, later, uh, which is so strong in, for example, in case of Milarepa, when he, he, for vengeance, he killed 35 people, but, he has also heard teachings of karma. So this idea that I have done a horrible thing, of course, as a human being, you feel guilty for killing others. On top of that, you feel guilty. Uh, you know, you feel the, you, you criticize your, your action and think about the kind of result that it will, it will bring. In case of Milarepa, if you would read his biography, you find that he, he says, you know, for day and night, for many, many, many days, he couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat, he couldn't, he, you know, relax. When he sit down, he wants to walk. When he's walking, he wants to sit. He just, the only thing that he could feel was remorse and guilt for having killed those peoples. And you see that it is so strong that he's willing to go through anything to make the purification. Um, Mm, so this is very, very important part, uh, imp sort of essential um, part of um, the purification, mm, you know, self-criticism, this type of healthy self-criticism that knowing we, one has done something wrong after having done it. Then, um, yeah, so then the next one is, um, the antidote now, um, engaging in the antidotes as we have here, uh, antidote, antidotal action. Yes. So, um, like I said, you know, when uh, people still do that, you know, they, and it is also natural, I think, you know, like when you have, let's say, um, I was careless and because of my careless action, you know, uh, some animals die. And later I see that and I regret, I regret a lot. And I go, go to a teacher, to a temple, or just invite the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in front of me and make a, you know, mm, repentance that I really, um, you know, that was a horrible thing that I did. And um, I will never do this again. And as a, sort of a purification, I'm going to save lives of 100 animals, let's say. 
So that it becomes antidote. So you, you killed somebody, there was a negative karma. So now you're going to save life of some, someone else. So that killing and saving life become antidote, you know, right? Uh, saving life becomes the antidote to the negative karma of killing. Or just um, you have accumulated negative karma. Now the antidote is ac accumulating what is good karma. So that, so whatever that you do, you, you meditate on compassion, you, you, or you just meditate, or you actually uh, uh, you know, um, practice generosity, discipline, whatever that you do um, for the purification, thinking about the negative karma and for the purification of that, all of that becomes um, antidotal action uh, or just engaging in the antidotes. Um, now this is again important. So uh, usually we, you know, we have uh, prostrations. So when someone is doing like, you know, you yourself, let's say go in front of a Buddha statue and request Buddha to bear witness for your purification. And then you, 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 you sort of confess all of your negative karma, whatever you have done is especially the ones that you are aiming to purify. And then as an antidote, you make offering to the Buddha, accumulates merit. You make prostrations to the Buddha, accumulating merit. Right? You pray to the Buddha, accumulating merit. So that's the, the exact opposite of negative karma is the positive karma, right? So that, um, you know, engaging in the antidotes. Then the third one, sorchupetok. Sol Chupetop, here the translation is the power of restraint. Um, Sol Chupa means restoration, to be restored. So um, what is restored here? You know, your, your goodness, your, your kindness, um, your virtue, or your vows. Let's say, uh, you know, you have bodhisattva vow, and, but you harm somebody. So that is a negative karma that goes against the vow. So it weakens your vow. <clears throat> so, Sorchuba is this type of restoration. Um, now this, the third one can only happen when you make a vow. When you make a vow, that I will not repeat this again. I will not do this again. Whatever negative karma that I have done, I will not do this again. With a sincere mind, you make such a decision and that becomes a vow. And that is this, the power of, or the strength of um, restoration or here, what is it? The power of restraint. Yes, that one, the third one. Um, without this, if you do not promise to um, not repeat again, um, the negative karma, of course, will be purified a little bit, but not completely, a huge chunk remains. So this is what sort of get rid of the final um, part, um, so to speak, you know, of, of your negative karma. And the fourth one is the, the power of support. So the power of support is um, you, in generally the power of support is, uh, you know, they are, um, it is introduced to us as the triple gem, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. They are the power of support. But here in this sutra, uh, they do not say that the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, they are the power of support, but they say, taking refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and taking Buddha Chitta, these are the powers, power of support. You know, doing such actions are the power of support. So these four, is, is, um, these four are needed for a negative karma. So whatever that you want to purify, whenever, you need, first of all, you need to 
you, you, you need the presence of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, take, and you, you need to take refuge in them. Um, and then um, you need to regret, right? The first one, the power of remorse, you need to have regret, repent. And then you need to have the antidotes. So what are the antidotes to negative karma? Is doing something good, accumulating merit. So you do that. Matter of fact, Paturumbuchi says, one should, one should dedicate all of um, sort of one's um, practice towards the purification of negative karma, towards the, everything that you do throughout your day. You should think, ah, oh, you know, may, may this neg sort of virtue purify all negative karmas, you know, whether it is within yourself or within others, whatever it is that you, you know, um, you dedicate in this way. So then the third one comes into play, which is you promising never to repeat it again, which is a vow in itself, a vow in itself, and that has to be done. So the sutta itself is very short. And well, here the Buddha, he, okay, maybe I read. So the Buddha says, the action of repentance is to feel intense remorse for any non-virtuous action you have committed. First step. Antidotal action is to put great effort into virtuous actions once you have committed a non-virtuous action, the second step. The power of restraint is to make a pledge and thereby refrain from any similar action, the third, right? The power of support is to take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and not to forsake the mind of awakening. Um, the fourth. So by relying on such powerful forces, these four, you will be immune to misdeeds. Well, immune to misdeeds doesn't mean that <laughs> now that you know how to make purification, you know, you should, you should do whatever you want. And then in the night, you know, at the end, you can make purification and everything will be fine. It's not like a hangover um, remover uh, tonic or something. <laughs> Uh, of course, it, 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 you know, it, it depends a lot on our sincerity. Uh, if you are thinking like this, ah, okay, good, now I know how to purify. Now I can do whatever I want and later I will make a purification. It doesn't, it is not really sincere. Matter of fact, uh, not only that, it, it, it becomes um, a, a, a big breach of um, mm, a misuse of your understanding of karma and it doesn't work also. You cannot fool karma. Karma doesn't have a mind. It cannot be fooled, right? Um, so it's like that. Um, yeah, so the sutra is very short and Buddha, uh, he, he goes on saying that a Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, uh, you know, Bodhisattvas should read this, recite it, reflect and meditate on this, right? Mm. And through this, the effects of negative conduct will not come about, meaning the result of negative karma, uh, you know, will not be born because they will be purified. <clears throat> so that is the very, very short sutra. And like I said, I chose this to talk about karma. So please, if you have questions, you can come forth. Those of you who um, you know need a translation, you can give the question to your translator, and then they can ask me. Uh, yeah, and then I will see if I can help you with the answer. Um, that's it. Very short. <laughs> Karma is such a difficult topic to talk upon. You know, I'm always trying to find. Um, I don't know, uh, some way to talk about it, you know, and yeah.
you have questions? You can raise your virtual hand. I think there's a question in the chat. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, I see that now. Yeah. In the chat too. Okay. Uh, so, how about Amelia first? Rinpo Sheva, um, when we dedicate the marriage, I, I always dedicate the marriage towards the enlightenment of all beings. Um, and now Rinpo Sheva was talking about dedicating the marriage uh, in a different way to for the purification mm. so <laughs> which one oh. i would stay with the towards the enlightenment of all beings because that's purifying in a way too yes, isn't yes. it yeah that one is more uh compassion oriented this one is more like a practical <laughs> you know <laughs> You know, you need both, you know? So when you are so compassionate and you're thinking, ah, forget about purifying negative karma, who cares? All beings must be, become free from, from, from the grip of samsara. That is more important. So I should pray, pray for that. Which actually, what, but what you're actually saying is may all negative karma of beings be purified. You are actually saying that by saying may all beings become Buddha. You cannot become Buddha when your mind is not purified, right? But the way of looking at it is it's more compassion oriented and this one is more practical, you know, and yeah. This, yeah. Rita? Uh, yes, thank you so much, Rinpoche. Um, well, uh, I have kind of two questions. One is um, about karma. Well, purifying that way. In um, I do not hear you. Because we said we are half awake and we are not knowingly uh, creating negative karma. Um, Um, Rita, Rita, maybe you can type in your question in the chat because I do not hear anything. You, you're, you're breaking. I, I... <laughs> Okay, um, how about you, how about you, you type in your question in the chat, okay? No, and I did, I do, I <laughs> never kill the cockroach again, but somehow I will kill again the cockroach or I'll kill it right now and then if you know that we I, I didn't understand. Did you understand, Anna? Of course. It was about. Um, oh, okay. When when we do a negative thing and we we promise not to do it again, that is sort of unrealistic. How can we really promise not to do it again? I think something. Like that. that was the question. I guess. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> so it must be my internet. Okay. No, 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 no. It was really bad. Oh, okay, if that was it, then, then well, um, that's just how it is. In an ordinary world, you cannot, when you, like I said, when you harm somebody uh, and you say, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but, you always say, and you mean it at that time, I will never do this. Maybe you will do it tomorrow. Who knows? 
or maybe after a month, you would do, you might do the same mistake. But in that moment, you have to be sincere, right? You have to say, I will not do this again. I will not harm you again. I will not lie to you again. You cannot say, yeah, I will probably lie to you more, but I'm very sorry. So, you know, it doesn't work like that, you know, like, uh, yes, I will keep beating your brother, but I'm very sorry right now, you know, it doesn't work, you know. So very similar to that, that's also cause and effect. This is also cause and effect. And you have to make effort. So like I said, so those who, now this only happens, the, the stronger the remorse, more confidence you will have that you will not do it again. Uh, yes, if you, yeah, when you have strong remorse, that will take control of your mind and make you say something so irrational. Like, I will not do this again. And you will mean it at that time. You might do it tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Who knows? You know, but for this to work, you need to have a strong remorse. And also, the stronger the remorse, the, the better uh, we, we will become. We will, you know, when we really regret it, um, we will not do it again. And if even if we do it, we do it after a long time when the regret is gone, you know, when the effect is gone, right? So, yeah, there is this, it's, yeah, it needs more discussion, yes. I will look, look into this. There are some questions in the chat. So, first is from Hila. Do we have inherited karma from another life? If so, how to purify them if we don't know what we have done since we are not omniscient? Yes, we definitely inherit karma from past lives. Um, actually, we are walking bank of karma, new past life karma, you know? So, um, and, and how to purify it? So then, if you read like the uh, King of Aspiration Sutra, then in the beginning, you know, um, you'll find uh, from the beginning, you'll find things like um, uh, yes, from the beginning, you'll find things like whatever negative karma that I have accumulated through body, speech, and mind. You know, from the beginning, beginning less of time, I purify it all. So yes, negative karma has its cause and effect, its causes and conditions in, um, in um, the afflictions. Negative karma comes from affliction. So whatever action that I have, I perform, based upon my afflictions of um, attachment, anger, and ignorance, I purify them all. So when you say like that, then all of the negative karma is purified. Um, then Freya, how do the different karmas impact our, our practice? For example, personal karma, family karma, should I, should I change the way we purify? <clears throat> that is, yes. Um, hmm, how different karma impact our practice? So negative karma is negative and um, it's going to distract us. The results are going to distract us and disturb our practice. Um, the strongest one is our individual karma. So when a nation goes on a war, like right now, two nations are fighting and, and the rest of the world is, is suffering in, in, in terms of, you know, like things becoming expensive or whatever. So that is a general karma. And yes, it can, it can affect your practice, but not as much as your own personal karma. You know, even within all this chaos, there, there are some people who are totally fine. 
We don't, so many of us are totally fine. That's, that's personal karma. So yes, um, you should dedicate to the purification like just Emilia said, um, you know, uh, or what, how, what I said to Emilia that when you say, oh, you dedicate the merit to the liberation of all beings, you're actually saying that you dedicate the merit to the purification of all beings, you know? So that is same here too. So you dedicate your merit to the purification of yourself and your country, your, your family, everybody. Yes, Eric Souza. Eric. Bom dia, bom dia, não, boa tarde. <risos> Poxa, tudo bem? Uh, eu tenho duas perguntas para fazer. A primeira é em relação à prática de purificação que eu estou fazendo agora, começando o Nondro, com a Lama Sherab, aqui do Kandrolin. Uh, e eu vi muita relação, assim, entre essa prática de purificação que foi ensinada aqui no Sutra e as práticas que a gente faz com o Vajrasattva e durante o Nondro, assim. Eu queria entender um pouco dessa relação, assim, entre essa purificação com o, o, tirando, utilizando o Sutra e o Buda Shakyamuni e essa do Nondro, né? Assim, porque eu queria entender um pouco a relação entre elas. Uh, a segunda é como é que uma pessoa que não, pra, não pratica o Dharma consegue purificar Karma também, se tem esse método. Obrigado. Oh, Gustavo, are you talking? Maybe I have to go to your channel to listen. Can you hear yes. me? No? Yes, I'm in Portuguese okay. channel now. Great. So Eric has two questions. The first one is, is um, that he's doing the Gondro. So um, he wants to understand the relationship between this practice that you taught us today, uh, that Buddha Shakyamuni is teaching in this sutra, and the practice of Vajrasattva that we do in the Nondro. So what is the relationship between these two? Maybe you want to answer that first and then I... Um, can just... others hear me when I'm talking here? I think maybe you, you need to go to the English channel again, so... Okay, I go to the English. <laughs> um, right, so what is, so the question is, what is the relation between this sutra or this type of teachings of Buddha and um, Vajrasattva? Um, they're both same. They're both same. Vajrasattva just brings the element of um, Vajrayana to it, you know, um, but there's no real difference. Um, of course, one is Vajrayana practice and one is Sutra practice. That is the difference. But other than that, you know, for, for example, um, with Vajrasattva, other, uh, rather than you visualizing Buddha Shakyamuni, you visualize Vajrasattva. And rather than you um, accumulating merit, you know, as an antidote, you recite the mantra, right? something like that. Right? So these are, of course, fundamental difference, but not fundamental, just, just small differences. But fundamentally, it's all the same. Vajrasattva practice also need you to have regret, regret of your negative karma. Uh, and what is it? Uh, you to depend on the antidotes, like reciting mantra, making offering, whatever. And you to promise not to do it again, which is there in the Vajrasattva practice. And you need Vajrasattva, the image of Vajrasattva, which is your Mm, ten, right? Which is the fourth one. What is the second question? 
Maybe you can, oh, okay, I go to Portuguese, yes. So the second question is how people that are not Buddhist practitioners, they don't know nothing about Buddha Dharma, how could they purify karma? Yes, that's really good. Yes, that is a really good question. Um, so I was thinking about it today, actually, while I was trying to think about, okay, so for purification, we need these four. But like I said before, you know, you know, when you when you when you hurt somebody and you go and to say sorry, that is the purification, right? That is the confession. So you have everything there. Here, the it is the person, you need the person or someone related to the person to say sorry to. You know, I cannot, I cannot hit Gustavo and go to, to Anna to say sorry. It doesn't work. You know, so right. So the first, the fourth one, right? The 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 uh, then what is then translated as? Um, support. Support. The power of support. So the fourth one, power of support, is something like that. And maybe, maybe I might even bring somebody as a witness maybe i will say it in front of everybody that i'm sorry so all that is power of support and um yeah so i need to i need to regret i need to apologize i need to say i will not do it again and then it's if the person says yes fine i forgive you you're done you know so very similar to that and I think this then can be done anywhere. Like, uh, um, and I think this can work though, um, that you, uh, especially when you have taken vows, like, um, like a, um, let's talk about like a Christian nun who has taken vow of celibacy and maybe had done something, you know, just a little bit. And then <laughs> go go to go to the altar or probably to to the to a priest or priestess or to to their congregation and apologize. So they have the support. They have you know uh, the cre they have creator uh, or, or whoever is their support. You know and uh, remorse is there, regret is there. Uh, you know. Um, maybe there is going to be a punishment or whatever, which will be the antidote. Um, and you promise not to do it again. Of course, you have to do that. So in this way, I thought, yes, the, you know, um, negative karma can also be purified. Not all, but, you know, I, I think to some extent, you know, with uh, uh, different traditions too, of course. <clears throat> Um, yes, so anyway, that's it's long answer, answer is long enough, but that's a very good question. I, I, I was thinking about it. And, yeah. Um, Nicholas asked in the chat, is regret from the Buddha Dharma's perspective different from the perspective of Abrahamic traditions? I don't know. I don't know what is the regret. <sighs> How do people from Abrahamic traditions feel regret? Um, maybe, maybe their regret is mainly hinged on, I'm just guessing now, okay? Hinged on, okay, let's say I'm Catholic and I, I might regret when I do something bad and I feel guilty, but everything is hinged upon what did Jesus do for me, for my sin? You know, he did so much. He gave his life for my sin. And now I'm doing this. So, like, you know, I don't know, but I cannot really say I understand it. So I do not know. Here, the regret is just that I have done something bad. I have harmed others. That is bad. And I should not have done it. So I regret it. That's it. There is no other uh, ideas behind it necessarily. Of course, you can, um, it, the regret can be spurred from ideas of karma that, oh, now I will be reborn in, in a lower realms. Maybe, like, let's say I kill 
a bird you know, out of anger. And then I regret and then ideas because I have heard teachings of karma or whatever, life of the dead. I might think maybe I will be born as a bird and someone else will kill me. You know, that might spur the regret, but that is not the regret. That is a, maybe make the regret stronger. Right, so that's that. Um, there, there are some questions I think is in Spanish or Portuguese, I cannot tell in the chat. And uh, I just go to Pallavi. And Choki has asked the question, so if someone can translate that. And Pallavi says, what is the extent of purification of negative things in case it is in the mind, but not in action? So you mean, if we accumulate negative karma through our mind, but we don't actually do it, like, let's say, uh, I want to steal something, which is a negative karma, this wish to steal something, but I haven't stolen anything. So theoretically, you can say I haven't stolen anything. But the, but um, the initial preparation of stealing has already started. You know, the <laughs> initial preparation of stealing, the first step of stealing is wanting to steal. This, um, coveting what others have, someone else's have, and wishing to, you know, to get that. So that's the extent of purification in case it's in the mind and not action. Oh, if you mean it like that, then yes, this, um, the, the mental negative karma has to also to be, has to be purified. But if you mean, if the purification itself is only in the mind, but not in action, um yeah if you mean like oh this is a trick question palivi asked if you mean <laughs> if you just mean um that you want to purify it but you didn't pur make the purification of course then there Can is I clarify no clarify the question Rinpoche? i'll just clarify yeah. it so yeah. basically a lot of um angst anger uh, a lot of bad about a person in the mind mm. of having but also because of having been at the receiving end of something but you've not really actioned it mm. but it stays in the mind all of that mm. so what is the extent of that purification same um, you bring to mind buddha dharma sangha you regret your negative karma and you make the purification that's the same procedure because here we talk about not, not just physical karma, verbal karma of speech, but also mental karma. Matter of fact, the mental karma is the most important, right? So you do that, you just do the ordinary purification. That's it. Thank you. Yes. Wow, you guys have a lot of questions. Edison. I, I, I do not understand the questions in, in I think these are Portuguese or Spanish. So I just go to the English one. Edison asks, did Buddha come clean from other lifetimes or did he have karma in his last lifetimes to cleanse? Um, well, this is the difference between the Sravaka tradition and Mahayana tradition. So according to the Sravaka tradition, Prince Siddhartha is an ordinary man. And so even when he became the Buddha, became the Buddha, he still had to go through the effects of his negative karma. So sometimes the Buddha would be thirsty. Sometimes people would criticize the Buddha. Sometimes um, Buddha would become sick, have headache. So according to them, Sravaka, uh, Theravada traditions too, they will say that, that um, he became Buddha, but he didn't become completely free from karma, karmic result, you know? So in this life too, he suffered. Only after dying, Buddha becomes completely free because Buddha does not exist anymore. That is the only way of becoming free of karma, according to them. 
Now here, we believe uh, that Buddha was, most Mahayana tradition believed that Buddha was, Prince Siddhartha was a Bodhisattva on, on the 10th Bhumi. And many also believe that Prince Siddhartha was already enlightened many, many, many sort of eons ago. And this was just like a reflection. Maitreyas, people like Maitreya, they teach that um, the entire life of Buddha is just a, like a reflection, you know, a complete display. Nevertheless, whether the Siddhartha was a Bodhisattva on the 10th Bhumi, which means no negative karma. You become free of negative karma when you reach the first bhumi. When you abandon self-grasping, you do not have negative karma anymore. Um, especially when you attend the bhumi bodhisattva, no. And when, or, or if you believe that Siddhartha was Buddha from the beginning, sort of of did that life, you know, that the entire life was just a act, a show for us to lead us. Um, no, no negative karma, no. So that's the difference between the Mahayana and non-Mahayana schools. Um, Gustavo, what, what, is, what, what is the question of Enchuki? Can you understand it? it I think it's Portuguese. I translated it, Rinpoche. Oh, okay. You translated it. And then last comment. Okay. As you progress in Buddha Dhamma, you realize that your views were very different and you need to change your view. How can we fix our habitual patterns without losing our confidence? I think um, relying on an enlightened being like Shakyamuni Buddha is such a strong um, source of confidence. And you should take full advantage of that. You know, the visualization we did in the beginning where you're seated under the Bodhi tree um, looking at the Buddha this image is um, the image. The, this image is coming from the activity of enlightenment when Buddha gained enlightenment. So it was during dawn, when when the break of dawn, everything was getting lighted. Buddha gained enlightenment. You know, so then there is Bodhi tree. There are thousands of leaves, and the leaves, you know, um, yeah, and 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 Buddha seated under the tree and you in front of the Buddha, this type of image will give you so much confidence. And you just sit there, just sit and watch. Whatever wrong views you have, we all have had so many wrong views and we still have, and slowly, slowly they have to be abandoned. But in that moment, in that moment, you are in front of Shakyamuni, no need, no need any Courage, discouragement, all, all these, you know, yeah, doesn't matter. And that will give you courage. I can only say that. And just this, when you just think about it, Buddha sitting under the Bodhi tree, and you just look, just that. Already you accumulated so much merit, just sitting like this. <clears throat> you could be making offering to, you know, food and in clothes to hundreds of thousands of monks for, for however many years. And just a moment of thinking about the Buddha with the gratitude and awe, you know, the merit far surpassed all that. Yeah, I can only say that. And Yes, you, be, be, you, you must have had wrong views because if you don't have any wrong views, we should be, we should be Buddha. You know? So everyone has wrong views. So it's like that. And it's good that you realize it now. It's good that you realize 
that there are things to be changed and improved. That's okay. This is, this is what is called the path. You know, it is the path. Norman says, could you say something about shamatha in this context? Is shamatha purely a method of purification? <clears throat> well, um, shamatha is uh, an undistracted mind. And here too, of course, when you're making purification, you cannot be distracted. That doesn't work then, right? It has, to, you have to be focused, concentrating. So that then this purification becomes shamatha in itself. Um, shamatha, but shamatha in itself is not necessarily a method of purification. You could have the best shamatha meditation and have the worst of negative karma with you that don't cancel each other. It's like, it's like growing a medicinal plant but side by side, poisonous trees also grow. You know, so shamatha in itself is not a purification, of course. You don't even need to you know, think about negative karma or anything to gain shamatha, I think. That's, please, those who have to leave, leave. I, I didn't expect so many questions, but I'll just, just try to answer some. Paula says, how to find a middle way between dogmatic approach to karma, that is, I do offering a feel good in the short term and induce emptiness view without falling into the mood. And introduce the emptiness view without falling into the dim motivation of a um, hence maybe. Um, so Well, that is what we are trying to do here with these four sutras. The first three sutra mainly talks about relative truth. And then the fourth sutra uh, will talk about dependent origination. And while talking about dependent origination, it will also talk about the ultimate truth, selflessness. Now, we cannot teach somebody uh, ultimate truth from the beginning unless that person uh, has, uh, is, is ready. So signs of someone being ready is, yeah, either you have, um, you know, in this life, you know, oh, this person has studied this and that and have done this and that practice. And, and now I can talk about um, emptiness. That is a proper way. Or uh, as, Chandrakirti says, when someone hears the term, the name of emptiness, the whole body shivers and he or she has goosebumps and starts to weep. I met one guy like that, one monk from Mustang. When we, when we were talking through a text and we were discussing this about emptiness and immediately he, his whole body change and he start crying you know so i thought wow that is you know that is that is exactly what chandrakirti says this guy is the right vessel you know i don't know what he's doing now but yeah so most of us are not like that so most of us needs to first go through relative truth and it's okay while we're learning relative truth we will we will have misunderstandings as uh, you know, uh, how to say, mm, mm, because it is not the end, it, we, it's still, we are still on the path. So some might even, when we're talking about karma, some might even take karma in a very theistic way, but that's okay for now, you know, because you have to tell them that, oh, but you know, uh, there is emptiness though, there is selflessness. This is not the ultimate truth, you know, so, so that's fine. But the problem is when someone gets stuck there and stays there, that is a problem. <clears throat> okay, I think that is all. We managed to answer the questions. And yes, thank you so much.
for participating. Um, you know, we get to read the sutra and discuss karma. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. So thank you to the to all of the translators and organizer Rebecca <clears throat> and. Um, I think after one or two hours, uh, Lama Tsering is going to teach on this same channel, but I, you know, some, she's going, they're going to use our Zoom. So, and Anna has organized that. And yeah, she's really, really special. Uh, you know, I am, I'm, I'm a, a very, uh, Tibetans are, Asians are racist anyway, you know, so <laughs> I am, I'm racist, you know. So first of all, I am a very arrogant man. So not many teachers surprises me, you know, like <laughs> when I meet other teachers, I'm so arrogant. And for a, to, to get awestruck by a Western teacher, even more difficult because I'm so close-minded, I'm, I'm serious. And, but when I met Lama Tsering, I was completely, uh, really like, a, um, yeah, I was, I didn't know what to say. She was so, she's so special. Um, these people are so diligent, so dedicated to preserving Buddha Dharma. She's, to, she's a student of Chagdi um, Tulkur and I think also Dujam Rinpoche, Digu Kinse, you know, and um, she teaches in Brazil. And I think the information is already in the chat. Anna Schelling, he has already put the links there. Yes. Good, thank you very much. And I think I will dedicate the merit. You also dedicate the merit. Sonam di Tamji Zigbani, Tomni Nibe Danam Tamji di Jigan Naji Balon, Trubai Sibir Tsulen Do and Do Wara Rishu. Changju Pisim Jorun Buche, Maji Banam Jibab. Jibai Nibar Mibaya, Kone Kondo Pel Wara Rishu. Jambal Pel, Jidra Jamba Dan, Kundu Zambu Tehan De Jin De, Eda Kunji Jisoo Talo Jin, Gewa Dida Tamji Rabdu. May I, in all my lives, carry far the weight of Buddha Dharma. And if I am not capable to do so, may I always be worried about the longevity of Dharma. All right, thank you. Good evening. <clears throat>